so we talk about Norwich possibly being more suited to the championship for now. Um, a, a team that is very much an established Premier League team um, currently sits 19th in the league, Aston Villa. They do, of course, have a game in hand. Um, Joe, do you give them a chance? Actually, maybe, maybe we'll start with Stefan this time. We'll let him have a go. We'll bring you in. Yeah. Um, I mean, Villa, once you I think you go past Norwich, uh, it's, I mean, it's all up for grabs from there on. Um, you know, they're, they're going to have probably a heavy reliance on, on Grealish for sure. He's their, he's their star. He's their bell cane. You know, there's a big talk of that. This is probably going to be his last run at the club. You know, that in the summer, he's, he's going to go to one of the top clubs. So, you know, someone like him is going to be desperate. He's been at that club for years now. He's going to be desperate to not leave the club in the championship. So, you know, he's going to be playing on fire, you'd imagine. And, you know, he's the kind of talisman when you talk about, you know, we talked about Will Norwich be able to get on enough of a run that, you know, he can fire them. You know, he can win them games. You look at that game, I know it was in the championship against Birmingham where he gets punched in the head and then scores a brilliant solo goal to win the game. <laughs> he's the kind of player that can really inspire a team on. So. You know, I, you know, I think with with him, they'll always have a chance. So, you know, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't discount Villa. I don't know if some of his extracurricular activities uh, <laughs> might cause him a bit of troll on the run, but if he can keep himself straight, he should be uh, should be able to give him a good shot. Uh, Connor, do you think that they're too dependent on Jack Grealish? You know, are are they one one injury away from going down? Yeah, I mean, without without a doubt, he's he's sort of the focal point of their creativity and and attacking quality. Um, I, I, absolutely, I, th- I think they, they rely very heavily on him. Um, however, I, I think the bottom line is that they've they've proven with they've conceded what fifty six goals out of twenty eight games, which is an absolutely shambolic <laughs> record. So um, I, I think regardless of their attacking quality or lack of it, they've shown that they just leak too many goals. Um, and you know, it's it's something that you'd think maybe a, a co- with John Terry as assistant manager, he'd be, be able to maybe work with the back four a bit more. But they, they've just got a bit of inexperience, don't they? And, and not enough quality. Yeah, absolutely. Joe, they, they sit second bottom in the table, obviously with a game in hand. And a lot of Villa fans were, were very kind of against the idea of the league table being taken as it is, because um, it obviously would mean that they go down, where, whereas a three-pointer would put them out of it. But they do have the second worst go, um, goal difference in the division. They have negative 22 goal difference after 19 games. Is that good enough for a team that wants to stay in the Premier League? Definitely not. And like Connor said, they've conceded the, the most goals in the league. They've even conceded more than Norwich. Um, I I would take issue with them being called an established Premier League club because it's their first season back in the Premier League. Uh, I know that they have a long history of being in the Premier League up until the mid-2010s, but they've been in the Championship for two or three seasons before this. So they're they're very much in a rebuilding phase. They've spent tons of money. I think they've spent over £100 million, £120 million, something like that. Um, this This is a club that's won the European Cup before. I know. Yeah, of course they have. I think they've won a couple, haven't they? Or, no, sorry. Forest have won a couple. Of Villa have won one. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah I'm, I know they have a wealthy owner, but I'm still not 100% sure if they can afford to go down. I think that they're in trouble. Uh, they have to play in their remaining 10 games. Wolves, Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United, Arsenal. Those are tough fixtures. I don't think that, aside from Grealish, they have that much quality going forward. John McGinn is decent. Um there's another lad. There's an Irish player who they have who can, whose name I can't remember. Conor Horan. Conor Horan is is not bad, but they don't really have a recognised centre forward. Um, they they do. Wesley he's injured though. He's, he's out for could, the season. Could, could he be back though? He was out for the season. I, I wonder when he's due back. Actually, um, that's a good point. I don't. Well, another point about him. I didn't think he was that great. He didn't seem to be up to too much. Certainly from what I saw from from the few games that he played, I think he scored just one or two goals, um, at the most. So. They're a team that I, I would worry about. I think that they have tough fixtures. They leak goals. They score maybe yeah. more than the, than the than the other teams down there. Maybe. not. No, no, sorry, not even. I'm looking at the table now. And they score more than Watford, Bournemouth and Norwich, and that's it. And Brighton. So even West Ham score more goals than them. So they're in a very difficult um, situation, and they could easily find themselves in, in serious trouble. In a, yeah, in I'd say one point on like some of those players we've gone through, you talk about you know, the difference between premiership and championship quality. I think a reliance on players like Wesley to be your belt. Like we've said about Pukki is looks good for one game, but 
Um, the consistency really isn't there just to, to fire them to safety. So, you know, if Grealish is to go down, you really do look around the team. Like, is Jorgen going to come in and fill that, you know, kind of a one and four or five kind of game he, where he yeah. really seems to step up? Um, so, yeah, I think they're definitely got a big key man risk there. I, th- I think that yeah. it, it does come back to Connor's point, really. Sorry, Connor, um, about defence for them. Villa do score goals. Conor Horan puts in an exceptional set piece. If you look at how teams have stayed up in the Premier League before, it, maybe it is reliant on keeping a clean sheet and nicking one towards the end. However, it is from a set piece on the break. Um, and if Aston Villa can sort out themselves at the back, I would give them every chance of staying up. But based on what we've seen in the first 28 games of their season, they don't look like sorting out their defence. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Ray, for me, when I look at their back four, I mean, they've got players like, you know, Tyron, Ty- Tyron Mings, you know, has got a lot of potential. He played for England this year, didn't he? He did, yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't think he has a good partner with him in the centre of the back four. And I think you're looking at players like sort of El Mohamedi, who's, you know, a, a decent going forward, quick, but again, suspect defending, 1v1, not good. And you've got Neil Taylor, who again is proven in the championship, but has never really cut it in the in the Premier League. So they've just got a week a week back four, and I, th- I think that's ultimately their undoing. Um, and I'm surprised yeah, and there's further in it, to be honest. I think the Pepe Reina transfer, you would argue, really hasn't paid off too well <laughs> either. Um, <laughs> seemed to have had the impact. Ah, uh, wait, you wait, 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 wait till you say just wait on the last day of the season to keep them up. Yeah. I think they have West Ham in the last game of the season, so that'll be it. 